Does he reign? Does he reign in your life? Is he sovereign in your life, in your story? Is he God and God alone? Amen? Yeah, because we're living in a strange time, a strange day, a strange season. When out there, there's culture canceling all over the place. There's even Christian culture canceling. But thanks be to God that we have a house of God that we can come in and worship him and be in his presence. Amen? Amen. Because he's not only that he reigns, he's also sovereign in our lives. Sovereign. That means that he's in control of everything. Amen? I love God. Don't you love God? You know why he loves because he loves us so much. He loves us so much. I'm going to prove that to you from the text today I'm going to read. Why he loves you so much. And why we should love each other so much. Um, in the book of Psalms, in 139, the 139th book, 
Paul writes this little thing in beginning of chapter 14 that proves to me, and beyond a shadow of a doubt, that not only does he reign, not only is he sovereign, but he loves me more than anything. Amen? Reading your hearing coming out of a NIV. In verse 14 of Psalms 139, says, I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Hey, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Your, my frame, rather, was not hidden from you when I was made in secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. It further says, how precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they were outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for a day such as this that our eyes had not seen or beheld. But nonetheless, you met us at our bedsides with our two best friends, grace and mercy. Thank you, Father God, for another day's journey. Thank you for allowing us the privilege and the honor to come before your throne to give you praise and to give you glory. We give you that praise now, Father, honestly from our hearts. As you open them, O oh God, with the word of God preached by the man of God today. We thank you, Lord God, that if the word of God comes from a man or a woman, it is still good. Because no matter where you cut the loaf of bologna, it's all good. Whether it be in the end or in the middle or in the beginning, it's all good because it all comes from you. Father, bless every household within the sound of my voice, both present and those who are streaming live. Father, open every door of opportunity for us to use to be servants of the Most High God. Use this day and every day henceforth for your glory. Bless those who are coming, O oh God. Let your word be true. Let us be changed by the reading of the word and the hearing thereof. Let your word, O oh God, come alive in our hearts and let us know who we are and whom we are in you. We give you praise, needing not to see it done, but believing it done nonetheless, because you said we can call those things that be not as though they are. So, Father, we thank you and we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen, amen. I got a reason to praise God this morning. Does anybody else in this room have a reason to praise our good God this morning? Yes, hallelujah. I might have had things go awry, but I'm alive to see the things. So I'm well, happy to praise God this morning. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me say blessings and glory blessings and glory and honor and honor they Oh, 
know he's deserving of your glory, if you know he's deserving of your honor, oh God, see, he's not just deserving because of how good he is. He's deserving because there are certain things that God can't do. Lying is one of them. He can't lie. Well, another thing he can't do is he can't fail. So what does that mean? That means when we pray and we give our troubles and our burdens and the things that are weighing us down is when we lay them at his throne, we have to leave them there and trust that he's going to be God, right? So whatever that thing is that you got right now, whatever that thing is you've been praying about, if it's a family member, if it's a job, if it's, if it's walking in your purpose, it don't matter what it is. If you give it to him, he'll give it back to you tenfold. And guess what? When he does it, he, is, he ain't going to do it in a way where you have to doubt him. It's not just that he won't fail, it's that he can't fail. He can't fail. It's not just that he won't, it's that he can't. If y'all believe that, why don't y'all sing this with us? Just get in the spirit of worship right now. like this. All of your problems, all of your pain, even your trouble, you can give it to Jesus. All of your burdens, all of your prayers, even your struggles, you can give it to I love this part because it says that he won't fail. No, he won't leave you. No, he won't fail. And he won't fail. He won't fail. He won't leave you. No, he won't fail. All of your problems and all of your pain, even your burdens, you can give it to Jesus. Y'all believe that? All of your burdens, even your cares, even your struggles, you can give it to Help y'all say it. So he won't fail. He won't fail. No, he won't fail. He won't fail. It's not in his nature. He won't leave you. No, no. Come on, say he won't fail.
trust you that's all I can do said I have no other choice but to blame come on help me say said I I have no other choice
whom you know like we know our God. It's not just that he can't fail, it's that he won't. It's not just that he won't, it's that he can't. You can, you can take it either way. Somebody just bless God if you know that today he won't fail. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands and give God glory. That's a good place to just pause and give God some thanks, some praise, some adoration, some celebration. Thank you, Lord, that from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. On our good days, you are God. On our bad days, you, you are God. On our days when we are full of faith, you are God. On our days when we are full of doubt, you are still God. On our days that we are most pleasing to you, you are God, and on the days that we are not, you are God. The day before we were born, you were God, and the day after we leave here, you will still be God. Thank you. I pray that during this preaching moment, you will speak to us regarding the expansiveness of time, how big you are, how great you are, how everlasting you are but also how finite our time is, how temporary we are in these bodies. And I pray that you will press upon us the need to steward this time. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Won't you praise God for this amazing band and praise team? Man, grateful to God for another uh, Sunday morning. Um, there are a lot of times when I pull out of my, my driveway uh, headed to church on Sunday mornings that I just stop and thank God for what I get to do on Sundays and who I get a chance to preach to. It is a, a beautiful assignment that God has given me to shepherd um, this congregation, City Point Community Church, uh, to be able to shepherd you um, to be able to preach to you, to impart unto you week after week the wisdom that God has imparted to me uh, in the best way that I know how. It is absolutely a blessing. I want to pause for a moment and just say a big heartfelt thank you to all of you that sent well wishes and congratulations this week uh, during my induction into the Morehouse uh, MLK Board of Preachers. Thank you to all of you that traveled to Atlanta. It was such an overwhelming just show of support and, and generosity, and I'm, I'm still full uh, reflecting on the fact that so many of y'all just took out time, took off work, took off retirement, whatever it was, uh, to be able to, to come down there. And again, I just want to celebrate and thank you guys. Uh, thank you guys for that. I want to continue this series of preaching on stewardship. And I thought we were going to talk about stewarding money this week, but the Holy Spirit was like, nah, we're going to talk about stewarding time. And so I am going to be obedient to the will of the Holy Spirit, and we're going to today talk about stewarding time. And that is simply the title uh, of today's sermon, Stewarding Time. Uh, I've already prayed for us. I want to just jump right into the text. Beginning at verse, so Psalm chapter 90, uh, or the 90th Psalm, I should say, uh, beginning at verse 1, and, and for sense of context, I'm going to skip around a little bit uh, as I read this passage, because there are some pieces in here where the psalmist is reflecting on the wrath of God. Um, and these are things that are not necessarily relevant to us, because we live in a New Testament dispensation. And we are not always under the constant threat of the wrath of God because of things that we've done. Amen? We live in a grace space. All right? Um, I like to think about God like some of our mamas. Um, from time to time, they'll get that butt if they got to. Um, but they are not, hopefully, um, 
abusive and waiting for us to be wrong, waiting to catch us up doing wrong um, so that they can exact punishment on us. Um, that is the God that we experience in, um, in this New Testament dispensation. Um, I don't want to at all say that God does not leverage God's wrath sometimes, uh, because God does do that, and, um, but we live in a different dispensation. So because of that, there are some verses in here that I want to make sure I don't like confuse that I'm not going to read, but it's not because I'm not trying to be true to the text, but trying not to open up a whole another big can of worms, all right? 90th Psalm, uh, beginning at verse 1, says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You return man or humans to dust and say, return, O children of humans, for a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, or as a watch in the night. You sweep them away as with a flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. The years of our life are 70, or even by reason of strength, 80. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone, and we fly away. So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Once again, I want to talk from the subject stewarding time. Stewarding time. When I arrived at Morehouse on Thursday morning before the MLK Board of Preachers induction ceremony, the dean of the chapel, Dean Lawrence, took the entire group on a guided tour through the halls of the chapel building. Featured on the walls, throughout the halls and all of the great rooms of the chapel building, are portraits of individuals whose lives were either devoted to social uplift or some form similar to that. As Carla and I later reflected on the paintings, we talked about the fact that for each one of them, there was a season. That there was a span of years where they had a chance to work and impact. Some were longer than others, but they all had only a season. When we were all later at the King Center, there were squares on the wall, each inscribed with the year and work and accomplishments or historical thing that happened to Martin Luther King. Pastor Dre, Shayla, Carla, and I were struck by the visual representation of only 14 squares. The square started with the year 1955 when King became the pastor of the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. And later that year, the Montgomery bus boycott started in December. That was in the first square, 1955. And then it traced 1956, 1957, 1958, all the way down 14 squares until it got to the last square, 1968 his assassination in Memphis, Tennessee. Fourteen squares. The squares were a vivid representation of the finite amount of time that all of us have. So I raise the question to you this morning, what will you do with your squares? What will you do with the time that God has allotted to you? How will you steward the time that you have remaining? For you do realize that you have time remaining, right? You, you do realize that none of us have infinite amounts of time. Not only that, but relative to the amount of time that the world has existed and perhaps will continue to exist, our remaining time for life is short. We have squares remaining. So I ask again, what will you do with your squares? This issue of the brevity of life and the challenges that individuals have conceptualizing and then therefore capitalizing is at the heart of Psalm 90:12. It is unique in that it is a psalm that is written by Moses. In fact, it is the only psalm that is ascribed to Moses. 
It is thought that Moses is reflecting on the wrath of God in God's anger against the people that is recorded in the book of Numbers, possibly Numbers chapter 20. And in reflection on it, he considers the shortness of life and the need to use time wisely. So I want to share with you for the sake of time for this sermon, I want to share with you three things that I see Moses sharing with us from this text that I think is meaningful and and could be life-giving for us as we consider how to steward our time. He first of all talks about the expansiveness of time. In the fourth verse, the psalmist says that a thousand years are like one day to God. He puts it another way and says, it's just like yesterday, or it is just like a watch in the night. It is a quickly passing time. It, it, it seems in the text that Moses is trying to wrap his mind around the expansive time to the typical to the expansiveness of time in comparison to the typical lifespan. He's already laid out in the first few verses his adoration to God. He says, from everlasting to everlasting, God, you are God. He says, you were there before the mountains were formed. He says, you were God before the earth and the world were even formed. So since I don't have a way to capture your beginning date, and I don't know a way to capture God, your end date, I will just say, God, that from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Moses is effectively situating himself and others in time in contrast to the expansiveness of time that God occupies. Essentially saying, God, you real big and I'm real little. That's a good exercise for anybody to take up because we can sometimes be so censored in our own context so centered in our own social and cultural time, uh, uh, bubbles that we live in, that we can place God within the context of that box and the expanse of human history even, we can sometimes place within our small box of context and start to view it through that lens. But every now and then it is a good exercise to take a step back and realize and reorient yourself to the expansiveness of time. You know, this struck me this past week uh, during the solar eclipse when they were talking about the fact that the next time this will happen will be 20 years from now. Just in a matter-of-fact way that a random thing that happened on a weekday in our lives will not happen again for 20 years. For us, that 20 years seems like a long time, but in the expansiveness In the expanse of time, 20 years is nothing to the universe. I was also reflecting uh, that day on on, on, like the solar eclipse and and the fact and wondering historically how have people perceived these things without the technology and the knowledge that we have today. And it struck me that this has been happening for millions and millions of years and we sit in a small slither of time where we got a chance to view it happening. I started nerding out more, and I was up late one night, and I stumbled upon a documentary about the Great Lakes. This documentary talked about the fact that there are salt mines that were found when somebody was trying to dig for oil under the Great Lakes. They discovered to their surprise that underneath this freshwater lake, They're salt mines. That was weird, and so they investigated further, and what they came up with as their theory is that once upon a time, the Great Lakes were were a part of a shallow sea. It was part of a shallow sea that eventually dried up, and all of the salt content stayed. Over time, over the expanse of many years, the coral that had been at the bottom of that shallow sea dried up, hardened, and formed into rock formation. Later, after the ice age and the glaciers melted, the glaciers began to form what we now know as the form of the Great Lakes. 
The ice from the ice age from the glaciers melted and formed what we now know as the Great Lakes on top of the rock formation that is on top of the salt mines underneath the Great Lakes. And for all of this to happen, it took millions and millions of years. And So when we walk over to 31st Street Beach, when we go to Oakwood Beach, when we go to Rainbow Beach this summer, when you stand there and you look out at Lake Michigan, you are looking at something that took millions of years to be formed. Time is expansive. When we were in the process of buying this building, I, I nerded out some more, and I went down to the recorder of deeds because I was curious about the history of this building. I'm down at the recorder of deeds looking through all these old books, and I wrote down notes, and here's what I found. This building, November 5th, 1890, the rector and the church warden and the vestrymen of St. Abram's Church built this building. And so on September 30th, 1918, they sold it to the Illinois Conference Association of the Seventh-day Adventists. On January 5th, 1925, they sold it to the first black church of God called the Prayer Avenue Church of God, which is why when you're outside and you look at Look above, it says Church of God, because they were the Church of God, and they were on prairie. June 30th, 1942, they sold it to the Christian Hope Missionary Baptist Church. December 2nd, 1963, they sold it to the Greater Mount Olive Baptist Church. This picture that is behind me, it's from 1928. It is the first known children's church in the Chicago area. These children are members of the Prairie Avenue Church of God under the pastorage of Dr. S.P. Dunn. 1928, this picture is on those steps that you walked up today. These children stood on those steps came to church one day just like many of our children came today. They stood on those steps and they took this picture. Today, if any of these children are alive, even the youngest one would be 100 years old. Y'all, time is expansive. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Not only is time expansive, but Moses, the psalmist, secondly, through the text, draws out a point about the brevity of life. He says in verse 5, you sweep them away as with the flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. Verse 10, the years of our life are 70 or even by reason of strength, 80. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone, and we fly away. The psalmist reflects on the fact that time is expansive, yet lifespans are brief. He says he has seen the average lifespan be 70 years. He says sometimes by reason of strength, or in other words, because somebody was very healthy, maybe they got 80. But either way, soon, he says, we are gone, and we fly away. Somebody has rightly said that life is short. Even if we are blessed with 70, 80, 100 years of life, it is still a brief period. And since life is short, it is imperative that we make the most of them. The text talks thoroughly and finally about the wise stewardship of time. I'm going to be before you long. Y'all, I hate wasting money. Any of y'all like that? I hate wasting money. I hate wasting food. I hate wasting food. I, I, I hate, once I crossed over 40, I started to hate wasting calories. I want to make every calorie 
count. I hate wasting money, but if I do, there's the likelihood that I can earn some more. I hate wasting food, but if I do, I I can get more food. I hate wasting calories, but if I do, I can take in more calories and pay for it at the gym the next day. But when it comes to time, I can't get more of it. I I I can't make more time. I can't create more time. Time just is what it is. That which I've used is gone, and I cannot get new time to replace it. If I waste money, I can work overtime or a side hustle to make up the money that I lost. I can fill in my losses. I can borrow money, or I can be given money from somebody else to make up for the money that I lost. But nobody can lend me time. I can't work extra hard to earn more time. Nobody can give me the gift of more time except for God. Time is what it is. And that which we've used is gone. The psalmist says, Lord, teach us. Help us to understand. He he is not talking about from an academic sense, Lord, teach me chronology. That is not what what he is getting at here. He is saying, Lord, help us wrap our minds around the mystery that is time. Because when all you've ever done is live, when all you've ever done is go to sleep at night and wake up the next morning with another day to live, logically it just seems that it will always be the way that it has always been, that we will live another day. We'll keep on like this forever and ever and ever. And so because of that, it's hard to fathom anything differently. Moses says, Lord, teach us to grasp this concept. And then, Lord, having taught us to grasp this concept, this concept of the finitude of time, give us the wisdom regarding how to use that time. I'll never forget when my grandfather some years ago had open heart surgery. When he came to, he said, I was so happy because when I woke up, I looked up and I saw the clock in the hospital room and realized that I still had time. It is a profound statement, not to mention a double entendre. And it reminds us of the preciousness and the gift of having time. Now, this morning, you may not be laying in a hospital bed this morning. You may be sitting on your couch streaming with us this morning. You you may be sitting here in the sanctuary this morning, but all of us need, like my grandfather, to acknowledge the precious gift of time. And so as I get ready to close this sermon, I want to ask again, same question that I asked at the top of this sermon, what will you do with your time? To go back to the MLK story, what will you do with the squares that you have left? As I reflect on my own calling, as I reflect on my own work that God has sent, has set before me, God willing, I will do this work in the pastorate for about 20 more years. Those are 20 squares for me to fill in. 15 squares have already been filled. There are 20 more God willing to fill in working with a pace, and with a rigor, and with tenacity, and with conviction, because I've got some work to do to fill in my squares. I I don't want to leave this work without having finished the things that have been assigned to me. There are many of you in this room whose squares and callings are in some ways intersecting with my squares and my callings and each other's squares and each other's callings. And so I say today as we think about stewarding time, let's get busy getting into good trouble together to fill in our squares and to steward our time, leaving it all on the field for God because we only have a finite amount of time. 
Soon it will be our time to exit the field and a new generation's time to take the field. One day somebody may be standing in this building showing a picture of our children in this building having taken pictures almost a hundred years ago. What are the stories that we want them to be able to tell about us? What are the legacies that we want to be able to leave behind? What is the world that we want to build that we leave behind? We only have so many squares to get it done. Lord, teach us to number our days. It is incumbent upon us to work while it is day. The Bible says because nighttime is coming when no one can work. Lord, teach us to number our days. I close with this. I want you to think about your squares and the fact that you are living within a square right now. What will you place in that square this year? What will you do in stewarding the time that God has given you this year? It is easy to think in terms of five-year, 10-year, 20-year plans, but those things are not even promised to us. This year in the square in which you occupy today, what will you do with this square that God has given you? How will you steward that time? Let us pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for pressing upon us the importance of stewarding our time. Thank you for the gift of it. Lord, we repent of all time we have wasted as if we have an infinite amount of it. But Lord, we admit to you today that it is hard sometimes to wrap our minds around this concept of the finitude of time that we have. And we repent of that. We ask that you would help us, help us by teaching us to number our days and help us to use that time wisely. It's in the name of Jesus we pray, amen, amen. Shayla's coming now. Sorry, Gabby is coming now. morning city point what a wake-up call to realize and not just think about the year we're in but today the day that we're in the week that we're in how can we continue to walk in our purpose and I've said this many times but even in this moment there's a reason there there is a purpose of why you're here God put you here to hear this message, to capitalize on this opportunity so you can walk hand in hand with him. There is nothing better than living out the purpose that God has set for you. And that can only happen when you accept him and believe him and surrender to him and tell him, look, you got it. <laughs> so with that being said, I invite you today to, if you haven't already, accept him and realize that you are here for a purpose and you're ready to walk hand in hand with him so you can live out that purpose and I promise you it's bigger and better than anything you could have ever done in our finite brains <laughs> when you release it over to him also if you are looking for a church home and you haven't been officially a part of the family yet I want to invite you to come in and you know be, make it official. Let's make it official. So in order to do that, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's not like old school where you got to come up here and everybody watches you. All you have to do is text visitor <laughs> to 844-877-9729 and we'll connect with you. If you are ready to become a member, you can type membership to that number or also if you need prayer, if you're going through something, you do not have to do it alone. So please text prayer request to that same number and we'd be able to help you as well. All right. Amen, y'all.
awesome. Thank you. It is offering time. Praise the Lord. Uh, I want to just say to you guys, thank you for your generosity. I don't, I don't want to take this for granted. Um, we punch above our, you punch above your weight as a congregation um, because of your willingness to trust God as it relates to how you steward uh, your money, and I don't want to take that for granted. It has been a stellar year already. Last year, we closed out the year really, really great, and it is, it's because of your generosity, and it, it breaks all the norms. It, it, it defies all the stereotypes about what things will look like when there is a church with a lot of young adults in it. You guys defy that, and I don't at all want to minimize what that means in terms of how you trust this church institution, but then also how you trust me as a leader. Um, and I, I value that highly. So I just want to celebrate you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going into spring and summer season. And what's dope about spring and summer season is that we get to do things like spring break and go off and travel and summer. Um, we get to go off and travel uh, for our summer vacations. Uh, sometimes our giving goes on break when we go on spring break. And sometimes when we go on summer vacation, um, and our, our money, our giving goes on vacation, um, and our, our giving is out of office too. But all the things are still, are still happening. All the expenses are still happening. So let me encourage you guys as we go into this like warm weather season, and some of you are going to have those weekends where you just turned up a little too much on Saturday. And you had every intention of being in church on Sunday, um, but it just got good to you that setting up recurring giving is a way um, that, that you can be sure that what you value in terms of your giving here at City Point is just automated. So if you would consider uh, doing that as well, you can do that on all of our platforms. Um, there are four different ways that we give, whether it is recurring giving or otherwise, Zelle, uh, you can just simply use give, the email give at citypointcc.org. You can also scan the QR, text to give 312-313. I think we have another graphic that where the text is bigger, if we can go to that one. Um, text to give 312-313-1800. You can also give via our website, citypointcc.org. And then if you wish to give via envelope, just wave, uh, just wave your hand, and Janine's got some extra ones in the back. Um, but once again, guys, thank you so much for your generosity. Amen. Let us pray. We're going to raise some money for me, a new mic, so I ain't got to be up here. Up here playing with this thing. Lord, thank you, for, thank you for what we are about to give because it represents what you have already given to us. I thank you for constantly supplying all of our needs. Thank you for the ability to be generous to our church, but then for us to be generous as a church to others. And I pray that you will never let the storehouse run empty, that we may always do your work and your will. I also thank you for what is happening in this space that has nothing to do with an exchange of money. There are many that are uh, giving their time and their talents uh, to this work, and that is so meaningful, and we thank you for that, and pray that you will bless that as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Tim is coming with announcements. Good morning, City Point. Good morning. It's so good to see y'all today. So I'm going to keep it brief. Um, so after service today, we have our grief group with Reverend Juan Jiku. Um, Pastor Dre is taking a little break this week, so we want to make sure we give her her rest. So those of y'all who have signed up for uh, grief groups or need to sign up, want to sign up now, feel free to scan the QR code. Um, that'll be at 1 o'clock today with Pastor Juan Jiku. Um, secondly, so we've got some great opportunities coming up within the next few weeks or so. The first is going to be our baptism. So, yeah, so I'm not 100% sure if we're going to Lake Michigan, but for those of you all who are, okay, we are. We are definitely going to the lake, so that will be, 
No? Oh, we're going to what's behind here. Yes, what's behind here that you all cannot see um, <laughs> to be baptized. If you are interested, though, um, feel free to scan the QR code, and someone from our pastoral team will reach out um, to talk through next steps. Um, and then our last announcement is our baby dedication. Um, so... We are always so excited to welcome new members into our community, new little ones. Um, so if you are interested in signing up for a baby dedication within the next few weeks or so, um, or a few months rather, um, feel free to see me at the Next Steps table, um, and I will take your information down. Um, but we will have one coming up next Sunday. So we'd love to have you all here to welcome that new little one into our community. And that's all. Thank you. All right, awesome. Um, so it's 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 short notice, but we are uh, we have one baby that we are dedicating next Sunday. Uh, if you know you want to have your child dedicated, um, and this is not too short of notice, you can you can jump in too. So you can stop by next steps afterward, give them your name and other information that they'll ask for, and we can we can put you in on it as well. Uh, if not, we'll be doing another one in a couple of months. I want to call up real quick um, some brothers that, that I think are, are definitely stewarding time well. Um, they're putting together a really dope event that City Point is partnering with that will happen this coming Saturday. It is an expungement summit. Um, and amen. Um, and so where, is Victor here? Victor, stand up. Aaron, stand up. Um, so I mentioned Victor to you guys. Victor is assistant state's attorney um, for Cook County. And Aaron runs an organization called Escape the Odds. And it is all about supporting um, those who have experienced incarceration. And I think that this event that they're putting together, this expungement summit, is really dope. And I want them to come up and talk about it because there may be some ways that we can help them this Saturday as a congregation, and also we can help get the word out for those, um, those that need it. Good morning, City Point. Um, as Pastor spoke about, um, Victor and I are hosting a expungement event, but not only just an expungement event, but resources as well. I don't know if you all know, but in Illinois, there's over three million people with some kind of criminal background, right? Whether it's an arrest, a conviction, time incarcerated, and that's near and dear to my heart. I spent a significant amount of time incarcerated, um, so now it's a time for me to give back and utilize my network and be able to bridge that gap. Um, so we'll have, at the Flyer States, CD CTA, Advocate Healthcare, more of a holistic approach. So you got education, career, housing, and even health, and also banking and, and um, business, not business credit, but just personal credit as well. So I'm gonna give the mic to Victor so he can speak on some more. All right, good morning, everyone. So if you're interested in helping out, uh, donating your time, volunteering, uh, we'd love to have you. Uh, we need help moving people around, checking people in, um, setting up and breaking down. So if you would like to help um, with this wonderful event, please contact me or Aaron. And uh, as Pastor D said, I'm a uh, Cook County State's Attorney. Um, I see how unforgiving the criminal justice system can be for people. Uh, so, you know, I'm very blessed to be in contact with Aaron, and we kind of put our heads together to uh, come up with this event uh, and steward our talents and give back to the community. And, you know, just much thanks to Pastor D for lending us to church. And, you know, I think this is just a, just a great opportunity for City Point to really establish itself as a beacon in this community. So if you want to help out, please contact me or Aaron. We're really excited for this event and just get more people into church. So appreciate y'all. Awesome, awesome. And so, also, just, just help, me, help me out, Aaron. So, so if, I, if, I, if I got a little situation that I need to get cleaned up on my record, what do I need to do if I'm coming to the event not to volunteer, but because I need to get some stuff straight? What, what should I bring with me to the event? There's a, there's a piece of document that's called a rap sheet, and that can be... Um, 
picked up at the CPD headquarters right around the corner on 35th Street. Um, so that pretty much breaks down the disposition of your your criminal case, right? It shows what happened. And so that's needed in order for the attorneys on site to be able to look through your case and see if you're one, eligible. Um, and so that's one of the things that you would definitely need. However, if you don't have that, there will be a presentation. So maybe next time you can reach out to myself or Victor, and we'll be able to direct you into the right place to be able to get that taken care of. And if you know anyone who has, like, you know, a criminal record, you know, please tell them about this event. Uh, if they, like, again, we'll have resources, uh, job opportunities for people um, who have criminal records, uh, also housing, uh, and, you know, just other resources. So um, even if they don't have the documentation, there's going to be a lot of things for people who are looking to reenter society and be contributing members. Um, so please let them know. Thank you, gentlemen. Amen. A couple of a uh, couple quick things. So we have also just this is my last thing actually a, a women's empowerment summit summit that's coming up in mid May. That's going to be really dope. And so we've got some sisters at the church that are working really really hard. Uh, to put this together. So more details that are coming out, will be coming out about that very, very soon so that you guys can get registered. But we are looking to provide childcare that day and we're gonna do a daddy daycare. So I'm leading the daddy daycare and I need some, um, I need some other brothers to support me um, in this situation. Don't leave me in there by myself. So if you're down with that, if you're down to help support, you can stop by Next Steps, leave your information, and, um, and we will um, we'll be able to do that. We want, we want the ladies, if, for those that have children, like to be able to not have to figure out date, child care, and all of that that day, but to be able to come to the event and know that that's taken care of. So we got this, right, gentlemen? We got this, right? We're going to work on them. We're going to work on them. I need y'all to just ask men, like, you helping out, right? Just randomly for the next few Sundays. You helping out for the daddy daycare, right? Um, and it'll be a good time of building a relationship together as well. We're going we're gonna to make it fun. We, we got this. Some of us are educators or have been educators. We could do this. We could do this. Yes? <laughs> yes? Yes? All right, let's go home, y'all. <laughs> Trying to give y'all some time back because we, we went way long last week. City Point, give it up for all of our visitors and guests that are with us today. Thank you for dropping into the dopest church on the planet. You could have been anywhere, but you were here with us, and we appreciate that. Thank you to all of us, all of you that were streaming with us today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for everything that we experienced today. We thank you for the beauty of worship. We pray for the church, for our congregation. Um, we pray your favor, your blessings uh, over us. We pray that you will provide for us all those things that we need individually as well as collectively. Protect us, Lord, as we go out from this place. Protect us as we move about the city. Protect us. Keep our kids while they are away at school. Keep our kids, our small ones, as they go back and forth to school. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Be sure to say what's up to somebody before you leave. I love y'all. Peace. Cause we still alive No big I feel like Pac I shoot a shot I'm coming in hot
well, I got the steamer. I bring the fire, but you never seen her. I testify, I don't need a subpoena. They want my soul better go to Korea. I love my dog just like I'm Peter. Gotta protect them. I made the call, it was just like I'm rapping. I know we left here, now we back together, but I guess that is better now. Later than never, like, mm, what's happening? I'ma need y'all quit asking when. Me and my wife gonna have some kids. Right now, we just practicing. Practicing. Teacher said, quit rapping, man. That gonna hurt my average. I said, thank God I ain't average. Say what you say, cause that's A with Lecrae from the A train to the 